The Solvacium Optics 180, a red light therapy panel from a relatively new company. Uh, it has some pretty impressive power outputs, but some other things aren't quite as impressive. Stay tuned as I do a deep review of this new red light therapy panel. Let's get into it. Hey guys, it's Alex here from alexfergus.com and today I have the Optics 180 by a company called Solbasium. Anyway, this is a relatively new company. Uh, they were founded in 2018, so it's only been, they've only been on the market for a couple years now. Uh, and the idea was they wanted to bring the highest quality red light therapy panels and uh, other gizmos and gadgets uh, to the health space. So today I want to focus on their red light therapy panels. Now they, are, they sell a couple of red light therapy panels, I think it's like five in their range. And this is the middle of the road in terms of sizes. So. 180 is 180 LEDs, they do a smaller 120 and another smaller one again, and then they do larger ones as well. But this comes in around that thousand dollar mark, um, and hence I class it as a body panel, as it has under 300 LEDs. So a bit more about the company, they strive on offering great support, uh, they have three year warranty and a 30 day trial period, which is, which is good. They are based in Australia, but they sell worldwide and they have free worldwide shipping, so that is appealing for you if you're watching this in the states or the uk or new zealand for instance so anyway like i said i've been using this for a few weeks now and um yeah i've got lots of thoughts and, and feedback and i've been testing it with all my meters and and other gizmos and gadgets and uh i've got i've got tons of data to share with you so let's get into it all right so first things first how much does this cost well it scrapes in just under a thousand dollars which i think is good for a body panel i think they should be under the thousand dollar mark ideally um, or thereabouts, you know, around that thousand dollars is a good price if you're spending, if you're getting a good quality uh, body panel. The price, the exact price is nine hundred and ninety-five US dollars. Now they have offered you guys a discount, and that discount code is Alex A L E X, and it will save you five percent. And that that applies to every panel in the product range, I believe. Um, so that will bring the price down to $945, which is a good price. As I mentioned before, they offer free worldwide shipping for any purchase over $100. So of course that applies for this panel. So that is, that is really good because, uh, like I said, if you're in New Zealand or the UK or Canada, um, you know, a lot of these companies, you have to pay extra, you know, sometimes up to $100, $120 for shipping. So that is nice to know. However, as we will find out later on, though the price is good around that thousand dollar mark from a value point of view there are better panels but we'll talk about that later on in the piece what about the panel itself well the panel is what again what i call a body panel uh it is 38 inches tall and 8.7 inches wide uh we've got a white color and it's the only color they offer the leds are actually in three clusters you may not be able to see it from this angle but there's three clusters with a slight separation in between them there which Personally, I don't like because that is going to impact the treatment area. Pretty standard design, uh, nothing revolutionary or, or too unique here. Um, when we spin it around, we see that there's quite a few fans on the back. One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, and you've got all the componentry for a modular uh, setup. So you can daisy chain in more panels. And um, so that's all good. And obviously you have the connection ports at the top for that modular support. As you can see, I've got some metal wires uh, screwed onto the top, which I can use it to hang from a hook or, or a pulley system. On this side, we have pretty standard um, air vents cut in here. There's no real branding as such. There's no itched, itched um, you know, logos or anything like that. All you have is the little uh, company name on the top of the control panel. Now, speaking of the control panel, we'll have a better look at this later, but it is just your standard um, rather old school panel. Um, but yeah, we'll talk about that a bit later on. Got some rubber feet on the back here. Power plug is in the middle, which is better than being at the top, though personally I'd rather it down the bottom. Okay, so what do you get in the box? Well, of course you get the panel and the included accessories are your rather standard affair with one exception. So we get your standard goggles, your standard little door hook, pulley system, clips and uh, your top screws for the modular expansion. Um, cable with a reasonably short cable length it is only one and a half meters which is about five foot it does come with a local plug though so that is good but yeah it is on the shorter side of cables but what's interesting though is there's no spare cable for connecting multiple devices so um typically with these panels that offer modular support you'll see your powerpoint um 
cable and then you'll see another one to connect this to the second uh, panel for instance. You also get the manual which we'll look at soon but the uh, other thing you get is this little remote which is pretty neat. Uh, I've seen a remote in one or two panels now, the Lightpath LED had a remote and it was very useful. This remote is interesting because the buttons on it don't necessarily make sense when you first look at it, like the 10, the 30, the M, the power, I'm, I'm assuming M is mode, um, plus and minus must be for the timer, 10 and 30, not 100% sure what that is. It would have been good to use this because I'm not a big fan of the control panel as we'll talk, cover later on in the piece so it is a bit of a bummer but hey it does come with a remote so it's good to know. As for the manual it's a pretty standard affair. Actually not, I'd, I'd say it's substandard. Uh, it's, I mean it's good quality, it's nice, nice print and all that sort of jazz but the first few pages are all about the panels that are in available in the um, product range um, I'm surprised they don't have a price on it. And then you've got your setup, which is pretty standard. And then treatment recommendations, which is very, very basic. And then safety. So, you know, if you're new to red light therapy or new to red light therapy panels, this is kind of lacking. Um, you know, I'm sure it wouldn't have hurt to put a few more pages of info in there. So that's everything that's included in the purchase price. What other optional accessories or add-ons can you get? Well, of course you can get more panels and you know, chain them, chain them all together to make a bigger stand. Um, otherwise you can get two stands for these panels. So they do what they call a forward stand and an angular stand. Now, um, there's not much info on the website. It was a little bit disappointing to be honest. Both of these stands cost $400 and um, the forward stand is for your vertical setup. So you, know, you can stack them like so. Uh, the angular stand is for the overhead horizontal setup. Yeah, both of them $400, but they don't say, it doesn't say on the website how many panels each can hold, you know, like can you put four on there or is it just for one? I'm not too sure. So uh, you'd have to send them an email, so that's a bit of a bummer. As for warranty and support, well, this panel comes with a three-year warranty. The website does say that it's industry leading, but that is not true as we know the Red Light Rising Advantage series has a five-year warranty, which is quite amazing. But three years is good. A few years ago, three years was market leading. Uh, you have a 30 day trial period, however there is a restocking fee of up to 20% depending on the condition, so keep that in mind. I believe this was sent out from Australia, but they've got, I know on the back of the manual here it says they've got an office in um, America, so I'm not too sure if they've got a distribution center there or not. So if you're buying one of these, you know, the shipping's free, but if you've got to return it, uh, just keep that in mind, or you may want to check it, check that out in case you're going to send it all the way to Australia, because that's going to cost you a bomb if you're in the States. Um, they also do pride themselves on their support, and based on my experiences dealing with this company, yeah, they are, they are very active on the emails, and I know they've got a toll-free phone number as well, so you can call them, so that is all good. All right, now for the fun part, which is the power and performance of this panel. So if this is the first time watching one of my red light therapy reviews, I do recommend checking out my red light therapy review procedure video. And that's where I explain everything I'm testing, how I test it, the devices I use. Uh, I used to incorporate all that information into each review, but it just, it meant the reviews were going for like an hour long and people would see it over and over. So be sure to check that out if, you're, if you want to know how I do everything. Otherwise, what I'm going to do is I'm going to proceed to reveal all the numbers uh, that I have tested and um, you know, get my thoughts on it. And of course, if you want to see how these numbers stack up compared to other panels, be sure to subscribe because I will be including this panel in my 2021 uh, comparison series, which will be out very soon. And also, be sure to head over to the alexfergus.com red light therapy buyer's guide because in that article, I link to a spreadsheet, and actually I'll put a direct link to this below as well. And in that spreadsheet, it's got all the data from all the panels I've tested over the years. So you'll be able to see how this panel compares to a Biomax or compares to a Juve, um, you know, and, and see everything that I, all the numbers that I've tested uh, go into that document. So, yeah. okay, so before we test the actual unit, uh, let's run down what specs are in this panel. So. We have 180 LEDs. Now these LEDs are five watt LEDs and dual chip. So being five watt, you'd expect the power numbers to be pretty good. But remember five watt is not necessarily, does not necessarily mean it's more power. In fact, I think some of the highest tested, the highest irradiance um, numbers I've tested have come from three watt LEDs. So that is always interesting. And you know, important to remember when you're shopping for a panel, not to get caught up in some of these 
um, you know, big marketing terms. They are meant to be anti-flicker LEDs, so they'll be interesting when we test flicker soon. And they are 30, um, 30 degree beam angle LEDs, so it's quite a narrow beam angle. So it'll be interesting to see how the panel performs in the hotspot test. It is also a multi-wave panel. It emits five wavelengths, so we've got two wavelengths in the red light range, so we've got uh, 630 and 660, and then we've got three in the near infrared, 810, 830, and 850. But there's a bit of a downside there. Uh, the ratios between these um, different wavelengths aren't equal, and this is similar to, say, the Biomax, the Platinum LED range. So in this particular panel, actually the numbers are quite similar to what the Biomax does. In this particular panel, 40% of the LEDs are 660 nanometers, 40% of the LEDs are 850 nanometers, and then the remain, remaining 20% are made up of your 630, your 810, and your 830. So you're only getting 6 or 7% of the LEDs and all of this um, using those, let's call it, alternative wavelengths. Which is a bit of a bummer because, you know, there is some good research. Of course, there's tons of good research on 660 and 850, but there's also some promising research on those alternative wavelengths. So, yeah, it is, I mean, it's, it's tricky because... Like 660 and 850 are the dominant wavelengths, right? Which is why most companies use them. However, they're also cheaper to produce, which is another reason why you typically see more of those LEDs than, than the uh, alternative ones. So if you know it's only, you know, a few percent of LEDs are in that 830 or 810, and you want the benefits of that wavelength, and that's part of the reason you, you purchase a panel such as this, then you've got to keep that in mind that you're not getting a full body treatment. Like it might only be this panel, and this panel and this panel in the top whole section right so you're not getting the full targeted sort of treatment area whereas you whereas if it was 660 and 850 like an or if it was 25 percent going to four different wavelengths you would get a nice um treatment area so just something to keep in mind all right so i've got my spectrometer here what i'm going to do is i'm going to test the wavelength for both near infrared and red light and we're going to see what the peak wavelengths are and compare it to the listed wavelengths on the box let's get into it Okay, that's all done. So, unfortunately, the peak readings I was getting on here don't line up 100% with the peak figures that are listed in the manual and on the box. So, for instance, uh, there's 70% of the LEDs are at 630. The peak I had for those 630 LEDs was actually closer to 640. So, that's quite a difference there. There was a bit of light coming through at 630, but um, 640 was, it was much more closer to 640 than 630. The 660 peak, I was testing at 665, so again, that's a little bit off. Remember, there is always a bit of a range um, of, you know, like these aren't lasers, they are LEDs. So you do get a 5, 10 nanometer range, but it would be nice, you know, if a company says, hey, it's got 660 nanometers in it or, or 630, and you find out that actually the peak's more over here, but there's a little bit of that 630, uh, you know, it's in a way, it's a bit misleading, and then it makes you wonder, well, what other things are they... Have they got wrong? You know, it may not necessarily be deliberate misleading. It may just be, you know, something went wrong in the company and the manufacturing process, for instance, or it was a bad batch, or they didn't know, they just tested a bad panel and, you know, that's what the frame was. So um, I know this happened with the Mito, Mito Red Light Mito Pro, and I told them about it and they, you know, they were quite concerned that it happened. They did some research and realized that they did have a batch that was, was faulty and that's what I had. And now they've, um, tightened up their control policies, you know, they're testing the panels a lot more frequently and they'll fix the problem, so that's good to see. Um, so yeah, we have a bit of discrepancy at the 630 and 660, they're about 5-10 nanometers off. In the near infrared range, it wasn't as much of an issue. The 810 came out to be a peak at 805, so a slight difference there, but the 830 and the 850 were all good, so that's good to know. Alright, now it's time to do the peak power readings. So, uh, again, I cover all this in that other video, so you can watch this. I'm just going to go straight into the testing and then come back with the numbers. Okay, that was a wrap. So, um, yeah, the numbers are pretty good. Remember, these are 5 watt LEDs, uh, so you would expect the numbers, the power point, the power output to be a little bit higher, um, but not, not necessarily extremely high based on testing other panels, but the numbers are good. Uh, the combined peak power in the middle, that was for near infrared and red light, was 74.1 milliwatts over centimeters squared. So that's, that's a, you know, it's up there. It's a, it's a good number. Remember, check out the, um, my data sheet, red light therapy data sheet. I'll put a link to below and you can compare how this 
you can see how this number compares to other panels. So for instance, back in 2019, uh, you know, that sort of peak power would have been, may have been the top powered panel, or it was definitely, would have definitely been up there. Fast forward to 2021 with the new generation panels, it's definitely up there, but it's not the highest. I, I've had peak powers in the 80s and 90s. Uh, I don't think anyone's broke the 100 milliwatt number yet. So, you know, it's, it's good, but it's not the best. Um, peak power for the red was 44 milliwatts and peak power in the near infrared was 42 and a half. So the good thing there is both those numbers are quite similar, right? Typically we see near infrared being a lot higher than red light. Uh, usually, sometimes it's the other way around. Uh, but it is nice to know that they're both quite balanced there, which is good. Now the average power over nine spots was 56.7. Remember I'm testing on the edge and the center there. Um, it's just the way I do my calculations. It's not super scientific or anything like that, but it is a good metric to compare. And then the total out power output, which is a number that is nice to compare across panels, that came out to be 82.7 watts, which is, which is a good number, especially considering that it's only 180 LEDs, you know, like if we if we were up at the 250 or even 300 LED count, then um, that power would probably be a, a little bit higher. So, 82 for 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 180 watts is is respectable. And these numbers again, I'll crunch these numbers further in the value section coming up. But again, you can always go off to that and check out that spreadsheet and see how these numbers compare. The wattage draw figures were 685 watts for both red and the infrared, and the split was. 300 watts for red and just under 400 watts for near infrared. Okay, so I've got the panel six inches from the wall, uh, blank wall here, and you're looking roughly at the middle of the panel. So I'm going to turn this on now, and we're going to see how this looks. You're only seeing um, the red light. Of course, the near infrared light is uh, invisible. Now, this is what I call the polka dot effect, and um, I have to be honest, that's probably the worst I've seen out of any panel. Um, the Biomax have always been known to have quite a bad polka dot effect, um, but unfortunately, I think this is this is even worse. Now, what's interesting here, though, is <laughs> this is actually a good case study, I guess. So, this panel has thirty degree it has a thirty degree beam angle. So, I I did expect to see some polka dot effect, not this strong, but some effect because that means the light isn't isn't spreading out as much as it would in say a sixty or ninety. Um, degree beam angle LED. I I think from from my experience doing these tests, I think 60 is probably where you want to be. Uh, I think that's what the Mitre Red series use. Um, check out that document in my spreadsheet because I've got all the data in there. So 30, yeah, you're more likely to see this. But that's not the only concern. Um, see the difference between that color. I hope you can see this because it's quite quite clear to my eye and even on the screen I'm looking at here on the camera. But sometimes when I watch this on the computer later, you can't really notice it. But that spot there. And that spot there are very different to these spots, right? So remember, this is a multi-wave panel, and we have two different wavelengths in the red light range. So we have 630 and 660. And remember, 40% of, well, out of the red light range, 80% is going to 660, and 14 or 15% is going to the 630. So you can see firsthand the differences of, um, well, you can see where those 630 nanometer LEDs are, can't you? Like, there's one, there's one, there's one, there's one down there. So that's what I was saying before. Like, if you bought this because you saw, oh, 630 is really good for, I don't know, arthritis pain or whatever. I don't know, I'm just making stuff up at the moment. And then you buy this and you stand behind it and you've got arthritis in your knee and your knee is, is here relative to the panel. You're not getting any of that 630 hitting the knee. See what I mean? That's a bummer. It's, it's a shame. Uh, and the other thing to remember, well, there's a few things to note as well. And here in the middle, we've got a big spot where there's no red LEDs. Like there's a whole section there where you're not even getting red light. I mean, you're getting some light, but the drop off is massive. You're going to get a ton of light there and very little there relatively. Um, and so this is just for red light. So remember there's three near infrared lights. If we could see that, it would be, it would be worse. You'd take three different types of colors. I mean, it's, it's quite crazy. Uh, now I'm curious, I want to take this back a bit. Um, let's take this back to say 12 inches. And again, you're probably not going to see this, but I can still see boom, 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 where the 630s are. Uh, <laughs> the other thing that I notice as I pull away is you might not be able to see this. Let's 
See what's happening through here? Guess what that lines up with? That lines up with the gap in the in the panel. Remember I said there's three clusters? So this is at 12 inches, right? And you can see like how spotty it is. Like that's bad. That's it's not great. You don't you don't want that. You're not getting even treatment, which is a shame. If I go really close. See see how pronounced that is? Of course we're only three inches out here, but Okay, so that's a real big blow for the panel, to be honest. Um, sure, you got some pretty good numbers from a power rating point of view, but yeah, that hotspot, just seeing that polka dot effect like that, it's, it was, it's a bit of a bummer. Anyway, moving on, now that we've got this power readings, we can do some value calculations. So the first one is the price per LED. Now that came out to be $5.25, which is actually on the higher side. You know, some other competing, like some of the rivals to this panel are around four dollars i think there may even be some below four dollars per led so you are paying a lot but again it really depends on how much power those leds are putting out and that's where the dollar per total watt output figure comes um comes into play eleven dollars and forty cents which is which is okay but there's some that are a lot better i think the best are around eight dollars and again you can check out the um my red light therapy data sheet to compare the numbers uh, yeah, about $8. I think that might have been like Platinum or MitoRed, for instance. Uh, and I think the worst to date I've tested is up in the $20, $25. And I think that was the Red Light Rising Advantage. So, you know, it's kind of middle. Well, actually, it's closer to the front. But now let's move on to the EMF testing. For this, I have got my Electro Smog EMF meter right here. And I am going to test microwave, magnetic, and electric. So I'm going to get straight into this and come back with the numbers. All right, so I've got my numbers here. Uh, now I did a reading at both three inches and six inches. I used to always do six inches, but what's happening is all these companies are improving the EMF readings so much, which is great, um, that all the six, re six inch readings are coming back perfect. Uh, with the odd exception here and, here and there, but it, it was kind of boring. So I was like, you know what, let's start testing at three inches as well. And I know a lot of people are standing quite close to the panel anyway, so hey, it's good to know. So. All right, what do, we, what do we need to know? Firstly, there was no electric reading at three or six inch, so that was great, that's really good. And that's an easy one to mitigate, so you'd expect that anyway with a good panel. Um, there was also no microwave reading, there's no Bluetooth or Wi-Fi on here, so that is fine. Uh, it would be the same with um, the light path panel though, because it's got the remote, if you push this button, you might see a bit of a spike, but that's, uh, I wouldn't worry about that. Um, next up, well, the main one we have then is the magnetic reading. At six inches, we're a 0.12 micro Teslas. Now that's low and it's pretty safe, but um, there are other panels that are well below that number now, so it's slightly disappointing. Uh, at three inches, we were 0.36 micro Teslas, which is in the orange range, which is in that concern, but not unsafe or not extremely unsafe range. Again, um, that's at three inches though, so yeah, it's not, I mean, hey, like, Compare this to panels from a couple years ago, those numbers would have been quite good, but you compare it to some of the really popular big brand panels from today, and those numbers, you know, could be, well, the numbers from this Optics 180 are, are inferior to the uh, to some other panels today. While I was testing the EMF, I also did some flicker readings using my spectrometer, and this, uh, I expected to see good readings because it's promoted as an anti-flicker device, so I'm like, well, you wouldn't promote that if there was flicker, and I can say, yes, there's no flicker at all, so that's great, and again, that's something that's changed a lot in the years. A couple years ago in the 2019 body panel comparison series, I tested six body panels, and I think only one had no flicker. Now, um, if I, it's almost, the opposite like it's very rare to find a panel with flicker so that is good to know the sound levels were 49.6 decibels which is which is low it's on the quieter side typically we're above 50 uh, and let me just give you a demo of the sound so uh, as you probably noticed there there was nothing too um, concerning with that sound there was no high pitch whir or you know, a, a pulsing sort of sound. Um, and you may be thinking, really Alex, like, do I care about the sound? But trust me, if you're standing by these panels, you know, 10, 20 minutes a day, uh, a couple times a week for weeks on end, like most people do, and, and as you should use these panels, if there's a sound there that really bothers you, trust me, it'll it'll really start grading you out. Okay, so in regards to setup, it's pretty simple. You just plug this power cord in, like I've done here, and then you turn the power 
that red power switch on at the back. Um, one thing I should mention as well, this panel doesn't have built-in grips. I forgot to mention that earlier. So the power's in, what I'm gonna do is turn the power on now. And as you see, straight away, unit starts working. And you can see by default, uh, both red and the infrared lights are working, which I always think is a good thing when they're both working. Sometimes only one works, and if it's only the red, you don't know it's an infrared because it's invisible, you can end up doing a whole session and not having any infrared treatment. Um, and also by default, the timer starts counting down from 10 minutes. So, like I said earlier, it's quite a basic screen just with that LCD um, timer in there. There's no menu options or anything like that, um, which, you know, I guess this is quite an old screen in that regards because, you know, even back in 2019, we had little on-screen menus, like for instance, the Biomax, you could scroll between different options in that, whereas the new Biomax in 2021 is a full touchscreen display. Um, so yeah, it's lacking in that regards. Not that it really matters, but, um, you know, some people like these things. But I, I don't know, personally, I think when you turn the power on and it starts working straight away, that's I'd rather it didn't do that. Like sometimes you want to turn the power on and get everything set up, but boom, straight away it's like glowing. You're like, wow, crazy. Um, so now I've been using this panel a couple times now, probably about six sessions, and I still get a little bit confused with the controls. So let's just run through this. Firstly, you've got your green buttons up here showing which LEDs are running. This isn't a button, that's your infrared sensor for the remote. Now you've got these buttons down here. Obviously plus and minus, they just add time to the timer. So the red, the near infrared, that changes between red light or near infrared or both. T does that. I, I don't I don't know what that does. I think that just disables the timer. I don't know why it says FFF, like why not just say go blank or zero. I don't know. Maybe there's a meaning to that. It doesn't say anything in the menu, I don't believe. Um but the weird thing is there's no power or on off button, right? So the very first time I used this, I was like, ah, oh, it's running. Like, you know, plug it in, turn on the power switch at the back. And it's like, ah, oh, how do you turn it off? And I'm looking around and pressing buttons. And you actually have to press the mode button, the red and the infrared. And all that does is just alternates between what LEDs are running. So right now we've just got the near infrared. You press it again for red, press it again for both. Um, so it's, yeah, reasonably simple, but at the same time, it could be done better. Um, of course, like... It, because of this panel just comes on straight away when you turn it on I just ended up using the power switch at the back um, but yeah an on off button or start stop button or a pause play pause button would have been nice on here another thing that's a bummer is me not having a battery sorry I can't show you this but I'm assuming it's power so this is like the light path LED panel light path LED panel you need to check out my first impressions of that video it's quite hilarious um, that was like insane to use and it's still insane, insane to use but the remote made things so much easier um, so yeah here you've got a power button so why didn't I have that on there I don't know M I'm, I'm guessing is mode for your near infrared and red light uh, plus or minus plus or minus 10 and 30 maybe that 10 seconds and 30 seconds why they have that I'm not too sure it would be better having 10 minutes and five minutes perhaps maybe that's what it is i don't know who knows okay so we're coming up to the end of my review here we have covered all the main things from a power emf value point of view now what i want to do is just share my experiences using this panel and then compare it to some competitors products and also other panels in the uh sol basium lineup so my experience is hey yeah i mean there was nothing i mean other than the control issues which we've already touched on there was nothing major to report on nothing super positive or super negative so that is all good I suppose the shorter cable was a bit of a bummer you know I think I I could just reach the plug but it was it was getting to the point where I needed was considering getting an extension cord that's a bit of a blow and I I do know like having those spaces in the middle there of the LED clusters especially now seeing that hot spot test you kind of like oh that, that's a bit of a bummer it means you sort of have to move around a little bit more to make sure all areas are getting treated but otherwise yeah nothing nothing super good or bad to report on in that regards. Okay, so how does the Optics 180 compare to other optics panels and also other red light therapy panels in the market? So so like I said at the start of this video, this Optics 180 is the in the middle of the product range for Solbasium. So they actually do an Optics 60 with 60 LEDs and Optics 120, the 180, which is here, a 360, and then they go all the way up to their 480. If you wanna go smaller and save a few dollars, then yeah, you're going down to the 120. Now I'm assuming the power and internals are all the same here, but uh, you're paying a lot more per LED. So it makes more sense to spend, you know, two, $300 more 
and get the 180 because you're getting better value, right? Uh, the funny thing is if you go up again, if you go from the 180 to the 360, which is of course double the size, the crazy thing is the price, the value gets worse. Uh, to buy, for instance, the retail price of this is $1,000, right? The retail price of the 360 is 2,400. So how does that work? Like you're spending, you're paying a premium to get a bigger one. Like usually it goes the other way around. So in fact, you're actually better off just getting two of these instead of the Optics 360 and then stacking them on top of each other or putting them side by side. So I don't know what's going on there. That's a little bit odd, but I guess from the product range, then this is probably from the Solvacium product range. This is probably the, the best, the pick of the bunch, I guess. Comparing this panel to competitors products, you know, Platinum LED, Juve, Biomax, Lightpath, Red Therapy, all those companies. Um, well, firstly, the best thing to do is head over to my Red Light Therapy uh, data sheet because you can see how this stacks up in all sorts of areas with those other panels and also check out my um, other reviews as well. The main competitors I'm looking at here are the Biomax 600, which is a similar size panel, uh, and the Mito Red Mito Max. Now, if we look at the Biomax 600 first, so the Biomax 600 after discount is $854. Remember, this was $950 odd dollars after discount. So that's a, you know, that's a $100 difference, right? Um, if you compare it to the Biomax 900, which is bigger, that's 300 LEDs. This has 180. Then the Biomax 900 is only $140 more than this, right? Now, both the Biomaxes, the 600 and 900, both have multi-wave technology similar to this. And in fact, the ratios are quite similar, but you're getting more power in the Biomax, you're getting a better control panel. Um, similar on the hotspot, which is interesting, though I'd say this is worse, the Biomax being better. And you get a, a, a balanced, uh, you don't get any of these gaps in the middle of the Biomaxes. But the price point, like I said, you're, you're saving money and you're still getting way more LEDs. Like even the Biomax 600, which is 200 LEDs, has 20 more LEDs than this, but it's cheaper, right? So if you compare it to say, the Mito Red Mito Max, now the Mito Red Mito Max is like the base, the Mito Red's base series, so it doesn't have all the fancy bells and whistles, it's only two wavelengths. But power-wise it's better, uh, price-wise it's a lot better. I think we're about 700 bucks for that, and you've still got um, 200 LEDs, right? So, yeah, I mean, again, like, it's a little bit expensive for what you're getting, I guess is what I'm saying. Um, if you compare it to another smaller player, such as uh, Red Rush, there's the Red Rush Therapy, oh, the Red Light, I forgot the company name, Red Therapy Co, I think they're called, but their panel is the Red Rush 720. Now, I tested this a few years ago, they have updated it slightly, they've got a pro model in the Classic, but if you look at the Classic, it's $200 cheaper than this, it's got more LEDs than this, uh, it's only got two wavelengths, sure, but it has, um, has some really good power, right? So, uh, you know, lots, lots of things to factor in. I guess one thing to, to really consider though is if you're an international buyer, if you're based in Australia, Canada, South Africa or something like that, then this may be a lot more appealing from a price point of view because you're getting that free shipping, right? Otherwise, you know, those $100, $150 price differences are soon eaten up once you factor in shipping and maybe customs and taxes. So that is interesting um, and it is why it is worth consideration. I guess the downside though is this is a newer company, it's only been out for a few years, uh, well three years now, it's getting on I guess, but that is all, some people are a little bit hesitant about buying from new companies, especially if you're spending thousand dollars. So, okay, so what are my concluding thoughts on this panel? Let's do what I like first. So, firstly the free world ride shipping, you know, that's a big plus. Uh, not many companies are doing that now. I know they used to, a lot of companies did, but they've slowly removed that um, just because of shipping costs and obviously there's lots of uncertainties and variables at play there so that is a big plus the other plus is this panel does stay under that thousand dollar price mark it's 950 dollars after you use discount code alex so that is good you know i think a lot of people don't like spending more than a thousand dollars and you know if you're looking at the biomax and you're looking at the 600 and then you think well the 900 is just so much better value but it jumps up to 1100 or thereabouts you know some people just can't get over that thousand dollar price point so it's good that they've stayed under a thousand dollars here also um it is respectable power, you know, there are respectable power per, per, per LED and stuff. You know, it's, it's not a low powered device, in fact it's, it's up there. So those are the three things I do like. As for the things I don't like, the control panel is a little bit clunky, um, you know, a little bit, yeah, but 
not that that's infecting, it's going to impact how well of a response you're going to get from the body, but hey, it's something I don't like. Um, the stands, if you want to get some stands, they're quite expensive, 400 bucks for the stands. You know, typically they're only two, 300 bucks from other companies. And then the low ratio in the multi-wave uh, LEDs. So you're only getting, literally you're only getting a handful of LEDs in some of those alternative um, wavelengths. Now again, that can be seen not necessarily that bad because you may want more power in the 660 and 850 which has more research but uh you know something that um personally i i don't like too much but the main dislike is what we saw in the hotspot test there how you're not getting an even spread of um of light it's quite concentrated unless you go right back to maybe 12 18 inches but then the power the radiance at that point is going to be so low so that is a Big bummer. Uh, I do think that was the worst I've seen out of all the panels I've tested. So yeah, that's probably probably the biggest negative of, of the lot, unfortunately. Overall, there's nothing super exciting about this panel. There's nothing like totally revolutionary, totally new, totally novel, totally game changing. It, it doesn't exist. There's no pulsing technology that you can customize or some you know fancy app that. I don't know, you can program in and do all sorts of cool things with it. Nothing like that exists in this panel. It is rather standard. Um, and it's kind of kind of standard across the board. Sure, the power level is up there. Sure, there's multi-wave technology, but that's rather standard these days anyway. Um, EMF readings are okay, but not great. Um, yeah, control panel, like I said, it's a little bit clunky to use, but it's okay. Uh, Price is okay, but not amazing. See what I'm saying? Everything's sort of standard. The main thing though is that hotspot, like the, the polka dot effect. You know you're getting concentrated light, which is which is a bummer. And that just brings it from being like, oh yeah, it's a good panel to being, yeah, it's okay panel because of this. Or maybe it's not even okay. Like maybe it's, it's, it's a big turn off to be honest, because it, you may not appreciate it, but that really does have a big impact on how these panels impact the body because you're getting concentrated points. You know, if you're trying to treat your, your knee or your chest, you're getting hot spots like one or two points here. You, you want to even spread that light. So it is a bummer in that regards. However, um, I guess it is worth consideration if you are an international company. I guess that uh, international buyer, sorry, because of that free worldwide shipping. You know, that is a big plus and a big draw card. Also, some of the other products that this company sell, their massage gun and that new roller, the red light therapy roller, you know, that's interesting and may bring in some interest in some customers that way. Um, but yeah, I think there's probably, well, I know there's better panels out there and your money is probably better spent on those other panels. But hey, end of the day, it's entirely up to you. I just share my thoughts and feedback and do the testing and share all the data so you can make an informed decision. Now, if you do want to buy one of these panels, be sure to use discount code Alex, A-L-E-X. It will save you 5%. It also gives me a little bit of a commission, yes, but it does help me to buy panels like this, buy my meters and produce this content for you. If you have liked this video, give me a thumbs up. If you want to check out my other videos, because i got tons of reviews up now, uh, check out my playlist below. And yeah, be sure to subscribe, because I'm going to have lots more um, comparisons and reviews coming up in the not too distant future. Alright guys, I'm going to leave it there. Bye.